Vito Genovese was an Italian-born American mobster in the American Mafia. Genovese, a childhood friend and criminal accomplice of the renowned Lucky Luciano, participated in the Castellamamari Reese War and assisted Luciano in shaping the nascent American Mafia's rise to prominence in organized crime in the United States. He would subsequently lead Luciano's crime family, which the FBI renamed the Genovese crime family in 1957 after Vito, its then boss. Genovese, along with Luciano, managed to take the heroin trade international. He fled to Italy in 1937, and for a brief moment during World War II, he joined Benito Mussolini's fascist regime for fear of being repatriated to the United States and charged with murder. After returning to the United States in 1945, Genovese mentored Vincent the Chin Giganti, the Genovese family's eventual boss. Genovese vied for the title of boss of bosses in 1957, ordering Albert Anastasia's murder and Frank Costello's attempted hit. Following this, he convened a mafia summit to strengthen his control, but the gathering was stormed by the police. Genovese's reign ended in 1959, when he was convicted of drugs conspiracy and sentenced to 15 years in prison. While in prison with his underling Joe Valachi, Valachi murdered an inmate whom he mistook for a Genovese hitman. Valachi later became a government witness. Genovese died in prison on February 14, 1969. Vito Genovese was born on November 21, 1897, in Risigliano, a frazione in the commune of Tufino, province of Naples, Italy. His parents were Francis Felice Genovese and Nunziata Aluotto. Vito had a sister, Giovanna Jenny, married Richard Prisco, and two brothers, Michael and Carmine, who subsequently joined Genovese's crime family. Michael, his cousin, rose to the position of crime boss in Pittsburgh. As a child in Italy, Genovese only completed school up to the fifth grade level. Genovese and his family arrived to the United States on the SS Terramina in 1913, settling in New York City's Little Italy. Genovese stood 5 feet 7 inches. Genovese had lived in New York City until 1934. Genovese bought a mansion in rural Middletown Township, New Jersey, in 1935 because he wanted to live out in the country with his family. The mansion's grounds were lavishly landscaped into Italian gardens reminiscent of Genovese's country, including a miniature rock copy of Mount Vesuvius. Today, it is home to Deep Cut Gardens, a public botanical garden. The mansion was destroyed by fire in 1937, when Genovese was in Italy investigating the Bocchia murder. It was never rebuilt. After the homes were destroyed, he and his family resided in a humble house in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Genovese began his criminal career by stealing things from pushcart vendors and completing errands for mobsters. He later gathered money from unlawful lottery players. Genovese was sentenced to a year in prison when he was 19 years old for illegal handgun possession. Vito Genovese was born on November 21, 1897, in Risigliano, a frazione in the commune of Tufino, province of Naples, Italy. His parents were Francis Felice Genovese and Nunziata Aluotto. Vito had a sister, Giovanna Jenny, married Richard Prisco, and two brothers, Michael and Carmine, who subsequently joined Genovese's crime family. Michael, his cousin, rose to the position of crime boss in Pittsburgh. As a child in Italy, Genovese only completed school up to the fifth grade level. Genovese and his family arrived to the United States on the SS Terramina in 1913, settling in New York City's Little Italy. Genovese stood 5 feet 7 inches. Genovese had lived in New York City until 1934. Genovese bought a mansion in rural Middletown Township, New Jersey, in 1935 because he wanted to live out in the country with his family. The mansion's grounds were lavishly landscaped into Italian gardens reminiscent of Genovese's country including a miniature rock copy of Mount Vesuvius. Today, it is home to Deep Cut Gardens, a public botanical garden. The mansion was destroyed by fire in 1937, when Genovese was in Italy investigating the Bocchia murder. It was never rebuilt. After the homes were destroyed, he and his family resided in a humble house in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Genovese began his criminal career by stealing things from pushcart vendors and completing errands for mobsters. He later gathered money from unlawful lottery players. 
Genovese was sentenced to a year in prison when he was 19 years old for illegal handgun possession. By the 1920s, Genovese had begun working for Giuseppe Joe the Boss Masseria, the head of a strong Manhattan gang that would eventually become the family he would command. Charlie Luciano and his associates began working for gambler Arnold the Brain Rothstein, who recognized the potential profit from prohibition and taught Luciano how to manage a bootleg alcohol company. With Rothstein's backing, Luciano, Frank Costello, and Genovese launched their own bootlegging enterprise. Genovese was indicted on counterfeiting charges in 1930 when police discovered $1 million in counterfeit U.S. currency in a Bath Beach, Brooklyn workshop. Later in 1930, Genovese is accused of murdering Gaetano Reyna, the leader of a gang in the Bronx. Reyna had been a Masseria ally, but Masseria chose to murder him when he suspected him of secretly assisting his archrival, Brooklyn gang head Salvatore Maranzano. On February 26, 1930, Genovese allegedly attacked Reyna as he was leaving his mistress's home in the Bronx, shooting him in the back of the head with a shotgun. Masseria then assumed direct charge of the Reyna gang. The Castella Marmeri Reis war began in early 1930 between Masseria and Maranzano. In a secret deal with Maranzano, Luciano agreed to organize the killing of his boss, Masseria, in exchange for receiving Masseria's rackets and becoming Maranzano's second in command. On April 15, 1931, Luciano duped Masseria into attending a meeting at Nuva Villa tomorrow on Coney Island, where he was murdered. While they were playing cards, Luciano allegedly excused himself to the restroom, with the gunman reportedly being Genovese, Albert Anastasia, Joe Adonis, and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Ciro the artichoke King Terranova drove the getaway car, but legend has it that he was too shaken up to drive and had to be shoved out of the driver's seat by Siegel. Luciano took over Masseria's family, with Genovese as his underboss. On November 25, 1936, Genovese was naturalized as a U.S. citizen in New York City. Fearing punishment for the Bocchia murder, Genovese escaped to Italy in 1937 with $750,000 and resided in Nola, near Naples. After Genovese left, Costello became the acting boss. Genovese became friends with Galizzo Ciano, Benito Mussolini's son-in-law, after bribing certain fascist party members, Genovese is suspected of providing Ciano with cocaine. Genovese gave over $4 million to Mussolini's fascist party before the conclusion of World War II. He was also granted the Order of Saints Maurice and Lazarus and designated a commendator for his role in establishing a new fascist party headquarters in Nola. Genovese allegedly ordered the murder of Carlo Tresca, the publisher of an anarchist newspaper in New York and Mussolini's rival. Genovese allegedly facilitated the murder as a favor to the Italian government. On January 11, 1943, a shooter shot and killed Tresca outside his Manhattan newspaper office. Carmine Galanti, a member of the Bonanno crime family, was later accused of carrying out the shooting. Nobody was ever charged in the Tresca murder. When the Allies invaded Italy in September 1943, Genovese switched sides and promptly offered his services to the United States Army. Former New York Governor Charles Poletti, who was then serving in the United States Army, accepted a 1938 Packard sedan as a personal present from Genovese. Genovese was assigned as an interpreter liaison officer at the U.S. Army headquarters in Naples and swiftly rose to become one of the most trusted employees of the Allied military government for occupied territories, AMGUT. Poletti and the whole AMGUT department were unaware of his background. Genovese, along with Cosa Nostra head Calagero Vizzini, developed one of southern Italy's greatest black markets. Vizzini sent truck caravans stocked with all of the basic food commodities required for the Italian diet northward to starving Naples, where Genovese Group distributed their cargoes. All of the trucks were provided passes and export certificates by the AMGUT administration in Naples and Sicily, and some corrupt American army officers even contributed gasoline and trucks to the operation. According to Luke Monzelli, a carabinieri lieutenant assigned to follow Genovese during his time in Italy, Truckloads of food supplies were shipped from Vizzini to Genovese all accompanied by the proper documents, which had been certified by men in authority, mafia members in the service of Vizzini and Genovese. In the summer of 1944 in New York, mobster Ernest the Hawk Rupolo, a former Genovese partner, accused Genovese of the Bocchia murder. 
Rupolo agreed to testify with the authorities after being convicted of murder. On August 27, 1944, U.S. military police detained Genovese in Italy while investigating his involvement in a black market operation. It was discovered that Genovese had stolen trucks, grain, and sugar from the army. When Agent Orange C. Dickey of the Criminal Investigation Division looked into Genovese's background, he discovered that he was a fugitive wanted for the 1934 Bocchia killing. However, neither the army nor the federal government seemed interested in pursuing Genovese. After months of frustration, Dickey was finally able to prepare to ship Genovese back to New York for trial, but he was under increasing strain. Genovese personally offered Dickey a $250,000 bribe to release him, then threatened him when he refused. Dickey was even advised by his superiors in the military chain of command not to pursue Genovese, but he refused. Genovese was arraigned on murder charges for the 1934 Bocchia death on June 2, 1945, after arriving in New York by sea the previous day. He pled not guilty. Jerry Esposito, another prosecution witness, was discovered shot dead by a road in Norwood, New Jersey, on June 10, 1946. Previously, another witness, Peter La Tempa, was discovered dead in a cell where he had been confined in protective custody. Without anyone to corroborate Rupolo's testimony, the government's case collapsed, and the charges against Genovese were dismissed on June 10, 1946. In making his decision, Judge Samuel Leibovitz commented, I cannot speak for the jury, but I believe that if there were even a shred of corroborating evidence, you would have been condemned to the electric chair. Genovese was able to rejoin the Luciano family in New York after being released from custody in 1946, but neither Costello nor his underboss Willie Moretti were willing to hand over leadership to him. Lansky organized a conference of the heads of the main crime families in Havana in December of 1946. The three items that would be discussed were the heroin trade, Cuban gambling, and what to do about Bugsy's Eagle and the struggling Flamingo Hotel project in Las Vegas. The conference was held in the Hotel Nazional de Cuba and lasted slightly more than a week. On December 20, during the conference, Luciano had a private meeting with Genovese in Luciano's hotel suite. Unlike Costello, Luciano had never trusted Genovese. In the meeting, Genovese tried to convince Luciano to become a titular boss of bosses and let Genovese run everything. Luciano calmly rejected Genovese's suggestion. There is no boss of bosses. I turned it down in front of everybody. If I ever change my mind, I will take the title. But it won't be up to you. Right now you work for me and I ain't in the mood to retire. Don't you ever let me hear this again, or I'll lose my temper. Genovese was now the capo of his former Greenwich Village crew. However, Moretti was killed on October 4, 1951, by order of the Mafia Commission. The mob bosses were dissatisfied with his evidence during the Kefauver hearings and were concerned that, with the syphilis now declining his brain, he might begin speaking to the press. Costello appointed Genovese as the new underboss. Anna Genovese sued her husband for financial support in December 1952, and they divorced in 1953 after testifying to Vito's involvement in criminal rackets, which was unprecedented for a mob figure's wife. She had left her family's home in New Jersey two years prior. She petitioned the judge for $350 each week. Vito filed a countersuit for divorce on the basis of desertion. According to Anna Genovese, Vito Genovese commanded the Italian lottery in New York and New Jersey, earning more than $1 million each year. He also owned four Greenwich Village nightclubs, a dog track in Virginia, and other respectable companies. Both cases were subsequently dismissed by the New Jersey Superior Court Appellate Division in 1954. In 1953, Genovese allegedly ordered the murder of mobster Stephen France. Genovese had assigned France the responsibility of overseeing Anna while he was hiding in Italy. Genovese, outraged by Anna's probable love affairs and her lawsuit against him, directed Joseph Valacci to arrange France's murder. On June 18, 1953, Valacci lured France to his Bronx restaurant, where he was strangled to death by Pasquale Pagano and Fioriciano, Valacci's nephew. In the mid 1950s, Genovese decided to take action against Costello. However, Genovese needed to remove Costello's close ally on the commission, Albert Anastasia, the head of the Anastasia crime family. 
Genovese soon conspired with Anastasia's underboss, Carlo Gambino, to have her removed. In early 1957, Genovese thought it was time to move on from Costello. Genovese directed Vincent Giganti to murder Costello, and on May 2, 1957, Giganti shot and wounded him outside his apartment building. Although the wound was slight, it convinced Costello to hand over control to Genovese and retire. A doorman recognized Giganti as the gunman, but in 1958, Costello testified that he couldn't remember his assailant, Giganti was acquitted of attempted murder. Genovese now leads the Genovese crime family and has promoted his loyal sidekick, Anthony Strollo, to underboss. Genovese and Gambino allegedly conspired to murder Anastasia in late 1957. Genovese had heard rumors that Costello was scheming with Anastasia to reclaim control. On October 25, 1957, Anastasia went to the Park Central Hotel barbershop in Midtown, Manhattan, for a haircut and shave. Anastasia was relaxing in the barber's chair when two men with scarves on their faces shot and killed him. Witnesses were unable to identify any of the gunmen, and contradictory theories persist today about their identities. Genovese planned to legitimize his new power by holding a nationwide Cosa Nostra assembly in November 1957, soon following the Anastasia murder and after gaining control of the Luciano crime family from Costello. Genovese recruited Buffalo, New York head and commission member Stefano the Undertaker Magadino to plan the conference, and Joseph Barbara and his underboss Russell Buffalino from northeastern Pennsylvania to oversee all of the details. Cuba was one among the topics of discussion, specifically La Cosa Nostra's gambling and drug smuggling operations on the island. The worldwide drug trade was also a major issue on the agenda. Other key subjects on the agenda included New York garment industry interests and rackets, such as loan sharking for business owners and control of garment center trucks. On November 14, 1957, powerful mafiosi from the United States and Italy convened at Barbara's estate in Appalachian, New York. The conference agenda included answering open concerns about illegal gambling and drug dealing, particularly in the New York City area. State trooper Edgar D. Croswell became aware that Barbara's son was arranging rooms in local hotels and having a big quantity of meat delivered to the Barbara residence by a local butcher. That made Croswell suspicious, so he decided to keep a watch on Barbara's home. When state police discovered many luxury cars parked at Barbara's house, they began taking license plate numbers. After discovering that many of these vehicles were registered to known criminals, State police reinforcements arrived and began setting up a roadblock. When the mobsters learned the police presence, they began departing the meeting by vehicle and on foot. Many mafiosi fled through the woods near the Barbara estate. The police stopped Buffalino's car, which was carrying Genovese and three other men, at a roadblock as they were leaving the estate. Buffalino claimed to have come to see his ailing friend, Barbara. Genovese claimed he was only there for a cookout and to discuss business with Barbara. The police let him go. Genovese testified under subpoena on June 2, 1958, at the United States Senate McClellan hearings on organized crime. Genovese refused to answer any questions, citing his Fifth Amendment rights under the U.S. Constitution 150 times. Luciano allegedly helped pay a portion of $100,000 to a Puerto Rican drug dealer in order to falsely incriminate Genovese in a drug deal. On July 7, 1958, Genovese was charged with conspiracy to import and sell drugs. The government's key witness was Nelson Cantelops, a Puerto Rican drug dealer who said Genovese had visited with him. Genovese was convicted in New York on April 4, 1959, of conspiring to violate federal drug regulations. On April 17, 1959, Genovese was sentenced to 15 years in the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, where he attempted to administer his criminal organization from behind bars. Selwyn Raab, a longtime New York Times organized crime reporter, said in his book Five Families that a number of detectives, lawyers, and organized crime experts had questioned Genovese's conviction. For example, experienced NYPD officer Ralph Salerno contended that anyone who understands the protocol and insulation procedures of the mafia would find it almost unbelievable that a crime leader would be actively participating in a narcotics operation. In September 1959, Genovese allegedly ordered the murder of mobster Anthony Carfano. 
Carfano missed the Appalachian Conference in protest of Costello's murder attempt. Genovese responded by murdering him. On September 25, 1959, Carfano and a female companion were discovered shot to death in his Cadillac vehicle on a residential street in Jackson Heights, Queens. Genovese allegedly ordered the murder of Anthony Strollo in April 1962 after determining that Strollo was involved in the conspiracy that landed him in prison. On April 8, Strollo left his residence for a walk and was never seen again. His remains were never recovered. In 1962, an alleged death threat from Genovese thrust mobster Joseph Valachi into the public eye. In June, Genovese allegedly accused Valachi, who was also imprisoned in Atlanta, of being an informer and gave him the kiss of death. In July, Valachi allegedly killed another inmate after mistaking him for a mob hitman. Genovese had posted a $100,000 price for Valachi's death. Valachi agreed to testify for the government after being sentenced to life in prison for the murder. On August 24, 1964, Ernest Rupolo's body was discovered in Jamaica Bay, Queens. His killers had attached two concrete blocks to his legs and bound his hands. It was commonly considered that Genovese ordered Rupolo's death because he testified against him in the 1944 Bokia murder trial. On February 14, 1969, Genovese died from a heart attack in the United States Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. He is interred at St. John Cemetery in Middle Village, Queens.